Welcome back. I recently purchased a Sony PVM off of eBay. This was an auction and I won with a bid of less than $200. And according to this listing, I feel like I got a great deal initially with this purchase. The monitor is supposed to be a 14M4U according to the listing. However, when the monitor arrived, I noticed right away that it was not a 14M4U. It was actually a lower end model, a 1350, which is a completely different model from the 14M4U. And to make things worse, the shipping was an absolute disaster. So without spoiling too much right at the beginning of the video, let me show you what the box looked like and let's unbox this Sony PVM. All right, here's our box. And this was delivered by UPS. Unfortunately, in my area, UPS does not do a good job with large packages. However, if you look at the outside of the box, it looks like it's held up pretty good for this shipping job. I did notice that there is some damage to some of these corners where it might have had an impact with something, but it doesn't look like there's anything major from the outside of the box. Now that we have the box open, take a look at the materials this seller decided to use to pack the Sony PVM. This seller used some type of air foam expandable bags. So right away I was kind of worried because these things did not feel as heavy duty as even a pool noodle. All right, now let's just get it out of the box and put it on the counter and see what it looks like. Oh, this is <laughs> definitely not enough packaging. And oh man, we've got terrible, terrible news. So look at our bezel here. Our glass has separated from our bezel. And that generally means that the bolts that are holding the screen to the bezel have snapped off the plastic that is on the bezel and attaching those bolts to it. So now we've got a huge gap in here. This monitor is not even going to be safe to turn on right now because something internally may have become seriously damaged. There's also some damage to the bezel at the bottom corner next to the power button. So a lot of damage to this PVM. Let's take a closer look at our packing materials again. Man, these foam things are just not that heavy duty. They feel pretty thin and flimsy and definitely would not withstand any kind of heavy impact or even a small drop. It's pretty safe to assume that this box was dropped or had something smashed into this bottom of it to damage the PVM the way it did. If you take a look at the box itself, it's a double wall box, which is a requirement to ship anything this size or this weight that's fragile. But again, take a quick look at all the packing materials that were used to pack and ship this Sony CRT. It's just not enough. One single layer of bubble wrap on the screen, this was destined to fail. Curiosity definitely has the better of me and I'm gonna remove the shell to see if anything internally is damaged like I fear it might be. I need to do this very carefully and slowly remove the shell. I don't want to do any additional damage to any board or even the tube inside by pulling on the shell too hard and causing something that's just being barely held together to fall and again cause more damage to the board or something else internally. And with the shell out of the way, let's take a quick look here. First, check out my board on the back of my tube. It is cocked uh, severely to the right. It looks like the tube definitely impacted the back of the monitor shell and it bent some of the pins on the CRT itself. Thankfully, nothing's broken though back here. Some of the cables did come dislodged and it's heavily angled, uh, barely hanging on. But again, nothing appears to be seriously broken with the back of the tube. I'm looking up here at the corner and I notice more damage. This is where the bezel broke. And here's a piece of plastic just hanging out in here that came from the back of this 
neck board where the convergence adjustment potentiometer is. That just encases it. So that fell off and was flopping around in here. After the neck board and the tube hit the back of the monitor, it must have popped off this plastic shell and it was just floating around internally. Well, it's kind of a miracle that the tube itself didn't crack or become destroyed from separating from the bezel like that, especially since it impacted the back of the monitor shell itself. This is just what happens when you don't use enough packing materials to pack your PVM and you just assume that it's going to be safely shipped. Well, unfortunately, this PVM is pretty much parts only at best anymore. The bezel's ruined. I noticed around here on the back of the circuit board level, there's some ICs that have been bent over where they're attached to heat sinks. So there's probably more damage there. It was obviously dropped. So I'll tell you how the whole return process goes. I've already filed with eBay saying that it was damaged. I'm waiting now for the seller to respond and we'll see what happens from here. Two hours later. Uh, I just got done speaking with the seller and I'm very thankful because they went ahead and they've already issued me a full refund and they're actually letting me keep it for parts. So what I'm gonna have to do is, I went ahead and boxed it back up, but I'll have to unpack it and probably take it fully apart and inspect the boards before I feel really comfortable even firing it up and turning it on. Now the good thing is, is maybe I can use that tube and some of the parts for other monitors. The biggest challenge here is gonna be the bezel. Now, since I officially own this PVM, I've got to try to see if I can get power run into it and see what condition the parts are in. And before I power it up, I need to inspect the parts, which means I need to dismantle the entire monitor. After I've inspected my board, I found one damaged part. That's this heat sink that has this IC attached to it. Now the IC is not broken and neither are the, any of the solder joints. It's just the heat shielding has been pushed out of the board. So I'm just gonna unscrew it and then reinstall the heat shielding and reinstall the screw. The boards are all back in place, but I've got one more thing I need to figure out, and that's how to keep the tube from shifting around uh, well, since it's not attached to the bezel completely. So for now, I'm just gonna tape it up like crazy. I put a bunch of electrical tape to try to brace it in place and keep it from slipping down and hitting anything and damaging anything further. All that's left now is to hook up our RGB console and finally power the PVM on for the first time. So let's see what happens and if, if it blows up or something or we get some weird crazy noise. I'm just going to see if it even turns on. Contrast, oh, unbelievable. Here, let's try RGB. Blue only, RGB. So let's see if we got internal sync or something. RGB sync on green and external sync. Oh man, so this monitor, it works. It looks to work perfectly uh, fine now. I mean, it has a really sharp, nice picture. Um, it's just the shell is ruined. I can't have it sitting here like this, so I have to figure something out for 
a bezel. So this PVM, it works great mechanically. Uh, it's just such a mess on this bezel. I can't leave it taped like this. So I might have to disassemble the entire PVM and try to maybe epoxy or JB weld the pieces back on this bezel. Let it sit for a couple days, cure out. And then hopefully I can reset the tube and everything because it's um, it's just not safe. It'll it'll end up damaging itself. So that's what we're gonna have to try to do for this monitor is disassemble it completely next, and see if we can fix this bezel at all, reassemble it, and we'll have a good looking 1350 Sony PVM that hopefully works and, and won't be a risk of falling apart. Well, thanks for watching today. This transaction wound up being a little bit tricky and different than I expected. Well, at the end of the day, I got my money back and I get to keep this monitor. And it's just basically a free project, so that actually is a good thing. If you have a monitor like this or something broken, uh, don't just immediately think it's completely worthless. Obviously, sometimes just some of the plastic can be destroyed. I don't know what other solutions there might be for uh, maybe resetting this in some other type of housing. Maybe you could build something custom for it. But for now, we're just going to, again, take that bezel off in a future project, try to repair it, and uh, get this thing back to one whole piece. Thanks again for watching today. Please let me know if you have any questions by typing it in below. And I'll see you next time with some more retro content.